I heard it once said that rough waters are true tests of leadership. In calm water, every ship has a great captain. Leaders are under pressure to figure out how to respond both internally and externally to rapid changing events as well as how to effectively lead their teams through crisis situations. Leadership effectiveness is revealed during tough times. Your attitude and approach towards these crises that are inevitably going to come up are going to determine what kind of leader you are. Today on the Champion Forum podcast, we discuss how strong leaders stand out by being able to make good decisions in high-stress situations. Jeff, I know we aren't scheduled to meet until next week, but I need to talk to you as soon as possible. A new competitor popped up in my market, and I had no idea they were here. Worse yet, we got a cancellation letter from one of our biggest customers, and despite my best efforts to save the account, they're going to the new competitor. This not only means a significant blow to my profits, but it's very likely that I'm going to need to start laying off some people from my company. What's the earliest that you can connect? I am about to lose my mind. This was a text that I received from a client that I do executive coaching with. Just hearing me read the text probably makes your stomach turn a little bit. We've all been in similar situations. And it's, it's enough to make you go mad, go crazy. You didn't see it coming. The blind spot, the haymaker, you know, the linebacker coming in from the blind side. And you find yourself literally fighting for your sanity in these moments. And you feel maybe even a sense of doom with no real idea of how am I going to move forward? What are we going to do? And as horrible as these dynamics are, what we know is that every leader is going to face crisis situations. At some point, every leader will be forced to deliver news that is not favorable. There are tough times in leadership. Sometimes these types of events are out of your control completely. There's nothing maybe that you could have done about it or very little. The key here is to ensure that bad doesn't turn to worse or even worse doesn't turn to catastrophic. I want to share with you today some strategies that's going to make you more effective when you have to lead through these crisis situations. These are some principles. And look, there's a hundred things that you could do. But as I think about how I led this leader that sent me that text through this crisis, as well as the countless crisis that I have had to overcome in my leadership tenure, I wanted to give you a few key points so that when the crisis comes up, You can revert back to this show. You can print out the show notes. You can find a sense of structure when the crisis hits so that you're not just running around frantic and getting your entire organization into this boil of stress and anxiety. The first point, and maybe the most critical, is phone a friend. Phone a friend. Now, look, you don't always have the time. There are times in leadership that you need to be decisive and recover from a decisive decision that you have to make. But when possible, phone a friend. Engage someone that's not emotionally attached to the situation. Now, look, huddle people from your organization, uh, whiteboard with your leadership team, uh, people that you admire and trust within your organization. Do those things. But I highly recommend you go outside of the organization to phone a friend. Why? Because this is going to bring a very non-emotional and and it's going to bring rational thinking into the picture if you have lost rational thinking and you're highly emotional. And by the way, shouldn't you be? Shouldn't the people on your leadership team be a little bit emotional, maybe a little bit irrational? Why? Because we're in a crisis. We're not sure how this is going to end. So when you pull somebody in like this client did to me, it's not that I don't care, but I don't have emotional skin in the game. So I can think clearly without emotion. And this is exactly what that client did for me. You know, they were helping to bring some composure and stability 
into this situation. They were looking to bring some outside perspective into the chaos. The key here is to, when you find this person, you actively listen and you absorb what you're hearing. So often in high pressure, we like to talk fast, our, our mind is racing. Uh, you're going to need to control this so that you can take in all that this trusted advisor, this trusted mentor, or maybe this colleague is saying to you in this moment. You don't even have to agree with it, but you got to process it and you have to listen. The value in doing so in this moment, what, what this is doing is it's opening yourself up to different perspectives. And what, this, what, here's what you're doing literally in this moment. You're starting to begin to explore the variety of what-if scenarios so that you can think logically through how am I going to recover from this or how am I going to min minimize the pain of this. And, and while you may think you're open-minded and maybe the majority of the time you are, you could be fooling yourself given the high stakes and the pressure of the moment. Actively question yourself to ensure that you're being objective with the feedback that this colleague or trusted mentor is giving you. Number two, bring your composure and calm to the team. Once you have received composure and calm, you have to deliver it out. Now you have to earn the right to be composed and to be calm, hence phone a friend first. Now we have a level of confidence, we have a level of resilience. Certainly, uh, there's gonna be some uh, angst and a little bit of uncertainty, you still don't have it all figured out, but you've at least gained some composure and calm. Now it's time to deliver that same composure and calm out to your team. Whether it's your biggest lost customer, pay freezes, layoffs, or the countless other scenarios that could pop up, what we know is that a composed leader will be most effective in helping the dark clouds dissipate quicker. And that's what your team needs in this moment. Once you've had a chance to stabilize and process the intensity of your situation is when you need to deliver the same calm to your team. You now have an opportunity, let's underline, let's bold, opportunity to act as a positive force to bring your people down to earth once they hear this news. If you're delivering news in person, which sometimes we are, uh, ideally, we are. It's not always possible. I get that. But if you are delivering the news in person, I want you to not only be calm inside, but deliver that from the outside. Body language speaks. Voice inflection speaks. Lower your voice. Slow down your rate of speech. This will help others calm, you know, re release a level of what's going on, and it's going to ensure that you're being heard and you're setting the tone for stability. That's what they need from you in this moment. In this moment, you want to prioritize objective truth. And you need to fight for that sometimes. Look, I've been there. you got to fight to find it. But how, how do you go about finding objective truth? Start asking questions. What are you going to do? And let them know. What might happen along the way? And let them know. Give them some insight into maybe some possible scenarios. How about this one? Why are you qualified to lead through it? This is going to give you confidence. Why are you qualified to lead? Because you've planned. You've prepared for this type of scenario. You never wanted it to happen, but you've planned. You've prepared. You've talked to a trusted colleague, a mentor, a business coach. And you're going to let them know, look, I, I never wanted this day to come, but here it is. But here's some good news. I've been planning for something like this. We have a recovery plan. It's not doomsday. We're going to get through it. You got to give your people that confidence. But it starts with asking yourself these questions. What we need to do in these moments is validate how people are feeling by saying things like, hey, look, I, I know you might be concerned. Or, or, hey, I can see that there's a lot of discomfort in the room right now. When you acknowledge their personal truths, it communicates that you get it. And you get them. You understand it. This is not the time for fake it till you make it. Assure them that there's safety and there's, and there's going to be high communication. 
and that we're all going to get through this together. Number three, shift your focus to what you can control. You know, in these crisis situations, it's easy to go down the road of what I can't control. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? I can't control a new competitor came to town. I now can't control that our biggest customer is leaving us. I can't control the fact that I'm going to have to lay people off. I can't control that I'm going to have to let the shareholders know we had a bad quarter. I can't control. I can't control. This is like spiraling to doomsday for you. Shift your focus on what you can control. You know, the great Napoleon Hill told us in the book, Think and Grow Rich, for every adversity, there's a seed of equal or greater opportunity. That's how great leaders think. How can I maximize this situation? How can I recover? What good can come from this? Effective leaders shift the focus to what can be controlled. Because that's in play in every adversity and every crisis. This prevents people from spiraling into fear about unknowns and uncontrollable factors and how much worse is it going to get. When you emphasize actions within their influence, it helps the team redirect their fears into opportunities. Now we're doing this in unity. We're doing it together. Hiding the bad news or the seriousness of this event is never a great idea. However, you can't just deliver the news and leave it with them to create their own narrative. Good luck with that. Next thing you know, the whole company's going down. Uh, people are quitting. They're jumping off the boat before it sinks. You may need to tell your team that you lost your biggest customer, and it's likely going to lead to layoffs. But don't stop there. Who in the world is digesting this as good news? And look, I'm out. Like I can't afford to take this risk. I need to be paid. You, you may also want to present with the bad news your recovery plan. Maybe tell them how you're going to invest in marketing and the sales effort to do what? Attract new customers and drive internal growth. We may have lost our biggest customer and, and that's beyond our control at this point. But here's what we can do. Here's what we're going to do. And here's what I'm committed to doing to recover. You might want to tell them about some short-term strategic cost-cutting measures that will put you in a position to recover faster. Hey, we might have to give up uh, the pony rides and sheet cake on Fridays that we all love. And that's, that's not great news. I get that. But I think if we do that over the next 13 weeks, we can save more jobs. When people understand that there's a path forward, you can actually turn the devastation into a battle cry of your organization. And I've seen this done effectively time and time again with my clients. And although nobody is asking for adversity, what I can tell you is that when you lead your team through adversity, it tests them. When this is done well, it's going to boost morale. It's going to create unity. It's going to drive confidence within your organization because they're going to look back on this milestone defining moment and say, we've been through adversity before. We're built for the battle. So don't see all of this crisis as bad news. Number four, actively listen. As soon as you possibly can, make sure to connect with as many of the people in your organization in a one-on-one -on -one environment. You've heard me talk about this on this show time and time again. By the way, if you're not doing one-on-ones with your team, what are you waiting for? This is where the cold nuggets are. You know, in this crisis environment, this level of connection, what it often does is it, it brings about this transparency and, and it will let you know what people are really thinking and how they're processing the news. Not everybody wants to chime in in the group meeting and start crying and say, what are we going to do? But it might be in this intimate one-on-one -on -one setting that they're letting you know how they really feel. The key here is not to necessarily change their way of thinking and, and how they're processing the shock of this news, but rather to actively listen with a high level of empathy. When you have a high level of empathy, it, says, it speaks something to people. When listening carefully to their concerns without interrupting, it's going to help them feel heard, which in turn calms emotions. When, when, the, when, when, you, when you go to people individually and, 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 and have this level of intimacy, they're going to start having this sense of, my concerns matter to the leadership here. 
and it's going to reduce their anxiety. Your role in these initial discussions is to foster an atmosphere of collaboration and support. That's what we need. There is chaos. There is crisis. Make sure not to miss this important step and do it fast. Do it quickly. Don't delay. Do it, do it now. So often this is missed. And what ends up happening is that your team begins to create their own narrative. They're at the water cooler talking. They're at the lunch table talking about what if scenarios and how the sky is falling and how the cup is half empty and what are we going to do now? We don't need that. We need to stifle that. High communication and feedback is critical to overcoming the crisis and ensuring that the bad news doesn't turn to worse news. Look, nobody gets up in the morning looking for a crisis. But the greatest leaders know that they're inevitable. The next time the crisis hits your team, remember these points. Phone a friend. Bring composure and calm to your team. Shift your focus onto not what you can't control, but what you can control. Actively listen to your team. These four steps will at least position a foundation to create a path to move forward in recovery. When you employ these strategies, you will help your team maintain focus, reduce anxiety, work through challenges effectively in what is a high, high stress environment. Until next week, keep turning the high pressure situations into potential.